Right now in five, the latest track on Hurricane Dorian as it batters the Bahamas and inches toward the Florida coast. Plus, a study shows that nearly half of employees are feeling burned out. How people in our area are dealing with that on this Labor Day holiday. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 5. For a second straight day, residents of the Bahamas are enduring the wrath of Dorian. And at least five people now have died. The now Category 4 hurricane stalled out over the island chain with winds at times gusting over 220 miles an hour. CBS News correspondent Nicole Killian is at Atlantic Beach, Florida now, where residents are bracing for what could come their way. Across the northern Bahamas, there are desperate pleas for assistance. We need help, everything now. And scenes of destruction. Complete devastation. Look at these cars, man. The islands of Abaco and Grand Bahama are under assault by Dorian for a second excruciating day. As one of the most powerful hurricanes on record slows to a crawl. Severely damaged yesterday, but we have not heard from that area as yet. In Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis says the state remains on guard. This has uh, been frustrating, I know, for a lot of people because this seems like we've been talking about this for a lot, long time. Uh, but we are in a situation where the storm is stalling very close to our coast. It is going to make a movement, and the movement that it makes is going to have a lot of impact uh, on Floridians. The governor is urging residents to heed evacuation orders, and shelters like this one here in Jacksonville have opened up to accommodate residents who have been told to leave. A lot of these people are experienced with these hurricanes. We aren't. We just want to make sure the kids can, you know, survive through this and have the right environment. DeMonte Milligan and his family just moved to Florida from Indiana. They were one of several who lined up early. So that now your two holes are sticking out. As the Red Cross set up cots inside a local school. We are a pet friendly shelter, so uh, people here are able to bring their dogs, cats with them. In Jupiter, businesses boarded up while some on the coast spent the Labor Day holiday getting in one last beach day before Dorian approaches. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Atlantic Beach, Florida. Evacuation orders have also been issued for coastal areas in South Carolina and Georgia. North Carolina's governor warned his state could see heavy rain and flooding later this week. Let's get a look at your first alert weather on this Labor Day holiday weekend. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joining us from the weather patio. Gary. Eric, we continue to watch Dorian. There it is out in the Atlantic Ocean. A very well-defined eye. And you can see how little it has moved as it just kind of sits and spins over the Bahamas. But right now, the latest information from the National Hurricane Center still maintains it as a powerful high-end Category 4 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 145 miles per hour with gusts to about 175 miles per hour. Storm nearly stationary. Uh, that's the only reason why it's not a Category 5 right now. It's kind of uh, brought up a little bit of cool water from below. Low, but uh, it's going to move very slowly. Hopefully it'll stay off the Florida coast, but it's still going to be close enough to bring high surf, uh, high winds, and also uh, quite a bit of rain along the Florida coast as it moves slowly northward as a powerful Category 3 hurricane just off the Georgia coast, then just kind of skirting the Carolinas, and then eventually accelerating to the northeast and heading out into the uh, Maritimes uh, south of Halifax, Nova Scotia by uh, Saturday, in, uh, Saturday afternoon. Now around here, we've had some buildups of clouds. A few scattered showers have popped up in a few spots but there is a severe weather threat, especially to our north and west, as severe weather may develop in Minnesota and then move southeastward. Tomorrow, the severe weather threat is mainly south and east of Madison. Already a severe thunderstorm watch north and west of the Twin Cities. Those storms will probably reach us late tonight. Otherwise, just a couple of showers and thunderstorms popping up. Temperatures right now, lower 80s with dew point temperatures in the mid-60s to around 70. Look for some thunderstorm chances late tonight and then again late tomorrow afternoon with a high of 80. at your News 3 Now First Alert forecast. Gary, thank you. A man is facing multiple charges after he threatened people with a knife in an incident on a Near East Madison Street today. Madison police say 31-year-old Tony Olson was walking around 1020. This was in the 800 block of East Main with a man and a woman. Police said Olson became verbally abusive toward them, then pulled a the knife and verbally threatened them. When officers arrived, he was still holding the knife before he tossed it to the ground and was taken into custody. Police tell us no one was injured. He's facing tentative charges of second-degree reckless endangerment, disorderly conduct while armed, carrying a concealed weapon, and two counts of felony bail jumping. A Lodi man accused of shooting outside a home during a domestic incident is facing multiple tentative charges. The Lodi Police Department says officers and Columbia County deputies responded to a call Monday morning reporting a domestic disturbance at the 600 block of Sunrise Drive. Police say during that incident, 55-year-old Robert Clark 
fired a gun outside the residence. Clark was arrested on suspicion of domestic related recklessly endangering safety, criminal damage to property and disorderly conduct. He was taken into custody. The police say there was no continuing danger to the public. Police are searching for a naked burglar who stole cash from a downtown Madison man's apartment. Madison police say the victim was sleeping in his bed in an apartment in the 300 block of South Hamilton when he was woken up by an intruder who told the victim he just wanted to wake the victim up. Police said the intruder, who wasn't wearing any clothes, then walked through the apartment before going back into the bedroom, asking the victim if he had any money. The burglar then went through the man's wallet on the dresser, took the cash before leaving. Labor Day honors working people and offers a chance at relaxation, which comes in handy considering that studies show two-thirds of employees report feeling burned out either sometimes or always. The World Health Organization gave burnout a legitimate classification in its diagnostic handbook this year, calling it an occupational phenomenon. Madeline O'Neill explains what that means exactly and mm -hmm. how people in our area are dealing with it. Maddie? Well, Eric, while this isn't considered a medical condition, it is a syndrome caused by chronic workplace stress that has real effects. Those include being exhausted, having negative feelings towards your job, and reduced productivity at work. We caught up with workers who had the day off today. What better place to spend that extra time than the Memorial Union Terrace? Mike and Laura Villada say they've both experienced burnout to some degree, both working long days and occasionally taking work stress home with them. So they tell us having relaxing days like this at the union with their daughter is a big help. Mike says we often spend so much of our lives working, it's hard to take a step back on other days. It doesn't really give you time to reflect on why you're actually doing it. It's just you're doing it to make your income and you know then you can enjoy the things that you want. So Labor Day is just kind of, for me, it's almost like a, a, a day of sitting back and reflecting of why am I doing this and what are my goals. Mike and Laura say another factor that adds to the burnout is feeling like they're always working because no matter where they are, they can always be reached by email on their phones. Now, others note Labor Day is a time to really appreciate everyday workers coming up at 6. We'll hear more from them on what this day means. Hopefully a lot of people got some time off today to enjoy and reflect. Maddie, thank you. Madisonians spent their Labor Day helping support children in our community as well. Three, two, one, go! Families gathering at the Vilas Park Shelter for the annual Labor Day Dash. Participants could do a 5K run walk, 10K run, or a tot trot, which was a mini dash for the smallest runners. The money raised goes to Safe Harbor's Child Advocacy Center. We depend on community support to keep our doors open. We have to fundraise like 30% of our budget every year. So um, we depend on events like this and the support of the community to really come out. Safe Harbor Child Advocacy Center celebrating its 20th anniversary. And a celebration in Madison today honoring labor workers. The South Central Federation of Labor celebrating its annual Labor Fest, the free event happening right now at the Madison Labor Temple grounds on Park Street. There are bands there performing along with magic shows, face painting, and a bounce house. 40 hours, 40 hours, overtime, all these things we get from the, the weekends, holidays, those are all due to the unions. And the unions, when I say the unions, I mean workers coming together to say we want better. And we want better not just for ourselves, but for everyone else we work with and our community. See, I told you that music there. The Community Services Committee is also collecting deodorant, small bottles of laundry detergent, and food gift cards for homeless students in the Madison area. And that event goes for another 20 minutes or so until 5.30 tonight. An app is helping farmers make better decisions when it comes to planting their crops. A wet fall and winter forced farmers to plant their crops historically late this year, and that's even led to uneven growth stages. Plant pathologist Damon Smith from UW-Madison says that's made it difficult for farmers to decide when to apply fungicide to crops because it's based on specific plant growth stages. Smith says farmers are looking for closely tailored recommendations about what to do. So one of his programmers has developed smartphone apps that they can use to help. It's called Sporecaster. It lets farmers input data like location and plant growth to help predict the best time to treat for white mold in soybeans. A Wisconsin Dells family whose baby had a heart transplant is paying it forward. News 3 Now first spoke with Travis and Linda Cornford last April when their six-week-old son Heath was waiting for a transplant for his rare heart condition. Now this July, Heath and his family celebrated the anniversary of receiving that heart. Heath's parents say the one and a half year old is now doing great and he now has a four month old sister as well. The Cornforts have started a nonprofit called A Heart for Heath, which offers care packages to area families with children in cardiac ICU with the eventual goal of helping with things like mortgage payments. Yeah, the people donated to our family, so we want to give back. We're fortunate we got to bring our son home and He's doing well, and I really want to be able to help pay it forward. 
And Heath's parents are holding a mud race in Mauston on Saturday afternoon to raise money for their nonprofit. A blood drive will be held in Heath's honor on Friday, yeah. September 27th as well. And we'll have all the details of those events. Seem to be right along with a link call. to Heath's blog on our website, channel3000.com. Police in Rock County are urging drivers to be cautious around school buses as the new school year is about to kick off this week. Officials with the City of Beloit PD are reminding drivers when they should stop for a bus. Police also, police also shared an illustration indicating what drivers should do when they see a stopped bus on a two-lane road, multi-lane road, or divided highway. Police also warn drivers to obey the law, even if police are not present. Back in March, the town of Beloit issued seven citations during an operation in which an officer rode along on a bus for seven days on a problematic bus route. Another officer off the bus conducted those traffic stops. After one week of college football, Wisconsin's running back Jonathan Taylor has been named the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. He had four touchdowns on Friday night. Two rushing, two receiving, 183 yards of total offense in the 49 zip win over South Florida. The Badgers will host Central Michigan on Saturday. Kickoff set for 2.30 in the afternoon at Camp Randall Stadium. More to come on News 3 Now and 5 Up Next. The search is on for dozens of people after a massive boat fire off the California coast. We'll have the very latest. And coming up tonight on News 3 Now at 6, Madisonians celebrate Labor Day with some artsy activities. I'll tell you what they are. That's ahead at 6. A search rescue operation is underway off the coast of California after a fire broke out on a boat overnight near Santa Cruz Island. At least four bodies have been recovered, but 30 people are still missing. Danya Bacchus has the latest from Oxnard, California. Emergency crews scrambled to help those injured following a massive vessel fire off the coast of California. Right now they're conducting shoreline searches 
to, for any, any, any available survivors. The 75 foot dive boat named Conception was taking dozens of people on a Labor Day trip when it went up in flames near Santa Cruz Island overnight. Fire department crews were fighting the fire when the vessel sank 20 yards offshore in 64 feet of water. The passengers were asleep below deck at the time. Five crew members who were awake and above deck jumped off the boat and were rescued by a civilian boat that brought them to shore. Family members of the missing are anxiously waiting for information about their loved ones. The trip was scheduled to wrap up Monday evening. The vessel has been in compliance, has been in full compliance. Uh, we are working, we are working deliberately with the vessel owner operator who is with us at this time. The National Transportation Safety Board is sending a team to investigate the incident. It's not known what caused the fire. Donya back is CBS News, Oxnard, California. New details tonight about the moments before a gunman went on a deadly shooting rampage in Texas over the weekend, killing seven people, injuring more than 20. Police in West Texas say 36-year-old Seth Ator was fired from his job just a short time before he went on Saturday's shooting spree. After that firing, um, he called 911, Odessa Police Department's 911, and so did his employer. And basically, they were complaining on each other because they had a disagreement over the firing. Authorities say Ador rambled but didn't threat anyone during the phone calls. Then police say the troopers pulled him over for a traffic violation and was unaware of what had happened on the phone. That's when the man opened fire with an assault-style rifle and then took off leading police in a high-speed chase. Law enforcement eventually took down the gunman outside a movie theater in Odessa. In the wake of that shooting, President Trump says something must be done. He's yet to say what kind of legislation he would support. He's already backed off previous calls to toughen background checks. House Democrats are already working on several bills to be considered when Congress gets back to work next week. You look at the last four or five, going back even five or six or seven years, for the most part, as strong as you make your background checks, they would not have stopped any of it. Fox does a poll and it shows the majority of Trump voters want to see universal background checks. So I don't know how Mitch McConnell and the Republicans stand in the way of this anymore. The White House says it's in talks with Republicans and Democrats on a package of gun safety proposals, the details of which remain unknown. One of the biggest names in comedy, Kevin Hart, is recovering from what's being described as major back injuries after a car he was in rolled down an embankment. This happened just before 1 a.m. Sunday morning. Hart and two others were in Hart's vintage 1970 Plymouth Barracuda when it veered off the road on the winding Mulholland Highway near Los Angeles. California Highway Patrol says Hart's friend Jared Black was driving at the time. Black and the third passenger, Rebecca Broxterman, were trapped in that vehicle, but Hart was able to get out. A member of his right security there. team took him Hart. home about a half mile away to get medical attention. Black was not driving under the influence. His father says he will undergo back surgery. Let's get a look at your first alert weather. Joining us now, Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Eric, it's a pretty nice Labor Day uh, across southern Wisconsin. Uh, you can see we had some sunshine, some clouds. Uh, a few little buildups of clouds have re resulted in a couple of showers, but the more important area that we're watching is to our north and west. There's a severe weather outbreak that could be developing across parts of northern Minnesota. There's an enhanced risk of severe thunderstorms tonight, all the way out down to about the Dells, and then a slight risk north and west of Madison, and a marginal risk elsewhere across southern Wisconsin. These storms will reach us late tonight. The very latest computer models show the strongest storms tracking north north of our viewing area, but it could be a close call. The storms will be weakening by the time they reach us by early tomorrow morning and could fire up again tomorrow afternoon, but that will probably take place just to our south and east. So there's a slight risk of severe thunderstorms over southeastern Wisconsin, just a marginal risk here, but I think by this time tomorrow, the storms will already be in northern Illinois and out of our area. Right now, you can see the storms starting to form into a pretty intense squall line across the eastern portions of North Dakota and moving into western Minnesota. A severe thunderstorm watch is in effect there until 11 p.m., but closer to home, just a few sprinkles popping up. There might be a flash of lightning in a couple of these, uh, but for the most part, they're just going to be uh, few and far between this evening. Live view from the WISC Sky Cam showing a few buildups of clouds, but also plenty of clear spots in between. The uh, Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison showing partly sunny skies. As we check out the Almanac for today, our high temperature topped out at 81 after starting out at 60, and right now our temperature is at 81 degrees. Winds are out of the southwest at 5 miles per hour. Dew point temperatures climbed up into the middle 60s, so it's becoming a little more humid out there. There's a difference and temperatures across the state. Lower 80s in southern Wisconsin, only mid-50s up near Lake Superior. And in between, there's a stationary front that's providing the focus for those thunderstorms. And you can see just south of that front, 
You can see those uh, dew point temperatures in the upper 60s to lower 70s that far to our south and west. So thunderstorms will fire up in the northwestern Minnesota and then basically ride southeastern along the jet stream and along that temperature contrast between the cool air to the north and the warmer weather to the south. That jet stream is kind of being influenced a little bit by Dorian just off the Florida coast. Eventually, notice how it dips here and then heads back out to the northeast. Eventually, Dorian will get caught up in that, uh, that wind flow and hopefully stay far enough off the coast to uh, keep the United States from getting any major problems. I mean, we're going to see some significant impacts, but hopefully it won't make direct hit on uh, Florida or the Carolinas. Here's that stationary front I was talking about. Temperatures north of the front, 60s, 70s, south of the front, mainly in the 80s with dew point temperature across much of the central and southern Midwest in the lower 70s. So a lot of fuel there for those thunderstorms to move southeastward later on tonight. Showers and thunders, a slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm this evening, better chance toward morning with a low of 66. Tomorrow, look for a high temperature of 80 degrees. Thunderstorms are likely in the morning, and then we could see some more thunderstorms pop up again in the afternoon. In between, it'll be windy, warm, and humid. On future tracking, so just a chance for a thunderstorm this evening. And then here comes that area of storms moving in late tonight into tomorrow morning. Then a brief buildup right along that cold front but notice by evening those storms are already out of here. Partly cloudy skies tomorrow night and then temperatures on Wednesday only reaching the upper 60s with partly sunny skies. Rainfall amounts generally around a half inch, but a few spots could pick up an inch or more if you get caught underneath the heavier thunderstorm. 7 to 10 day forecast. You see those temperatures in the 70s Thursday and Friday cooler for next weekend. And then as we head into next week, temperatures will be back into the mid to upper 70s. As we take a look at first alert traffic right now, you can see things pretty quiet on uh, the Beltline at Stoughton Road. Beltline, no problems, but there are some delays southbound on I-3990 heading in the Janesville area. A uh, couple of accidents, one on I-94, the other one on I-39, and then north of Madison, seeing some delays between uh, right around the Dells to Portage on southbound I-90-94. Uh, I That's your News 3 Now, First Alert Traffic. Gary, thank you. Ahead on News 3 Now at 5, how new research shows losing a moderate amount of weight could reverse the effects of obesity on the heart. That's after a short break. Stay with us.
Welcome back. New research shows losing a moderate amount of weight could reverse the effects of obesity on the heart. Chris Martinez introduces us to a patient who had weight loss surgery and is making major lifestyle changes. Carolyn Ackerman says she feels better now than she has in years. I wasn't able to walk very far. I got tired very easily. Um, I had sleep apnea, diabetes. The 57-year-old had weight loss surgery two years ago. She was more than 300 pounds at her heaviest. I thought, I'm not going to be around to see my kids. I won't be around to see my grandchildren grow up. Previous studies show weight loss surgery patients almost immediately see their diabetes reversed after the procedure. But Dr. Stephen Nissen and researchers at the Cleveland Clinic wanted to see if the effects of obesity on heart health could also be reversed. What we saw was pretty astonishing. These people had fewer heart attacks and strokes, and there was a 41% reduction in the rate of mortality of death. The new study published in JAMA compares patients who have weight loss surgery with patients who receive usual medical care. It suggests that moderate weight loss, uh, when done in the correct fashion, can reverse many of the consequences of obesity and diabetes. Carolyn has lost 130 pounds and no longer has diabetes. Bariatric surgery is not a cure. It's not a cure. It is a tool because I could gain the weight back if I don't watch what I eat. I can do things. I can walk. I can enjoy time with my family. And with her strong family history of heart disease, she says the study is more reassurance she made the right decision. Chris Martinez, CBS News. Patients who had weight loss surgery also lost more weight, had better diabetes control, and used fewer medications. Dr. Nissen says more study is needed to confirm those findings. Another check of your forecast in just a moment. Stay with us.
Tonight on the CBS Evening News, we're reporting from Cocoa Beach, Florida, where hurricane watches have been extended north along the Florida Atlantic coastline. In fact, there are mandatory evacuations underway here, as well as in South Carolina and Georgia. It's affecting some 6 million people. This hurricane has already pounded the Bahamas. Tonight, it is expected to get dangerously close to here in Florida. We'll have more tonight on the CBS Evening News. A swanky hotel in London serving up the UK's most expensive cup of tea. A rare tea blend called Golden Tips is made from the highlands of Sri Lanka. Handpicked by experts, costs $600 a pot. Dried on a velvet cloth in the sun, causing it to change from silver to gold. White-gloved waiters, as you saw there, use golden tongs to weigh the lavish leaves on a golden scale before serving to the handful of customers willing to shell out big money. $600 a pot for that five-star experience. Gary has been uh, closely monitoring uh, Dorian, and uh, you know a lot of folks have friends and family down in Florida. And uh, Yeah, hopefully it'll stay far plans. enough off the coast, but as it moves up the east coast, it'll actually cause high pressure to form across the Midwest and actually slow down our progression of weather systems. There's, uh, you can see the, uh, the radar view of the storm just kind of sitting over the northern Bahamas. Let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, potential for severe weather from to, uh, for tonight's storms that are in western Minnesota and the eastern Dakota is heading in our direction. You can see they're still a ways off, but they could bring strong winds late tonight into tomorrow morning. Nothing imminent right now, just a couple of pop-up showers or an isolated thunderstorm this evening. Well, we're back in 30 minutes for news for now at 6. Stay tuned now for more hurricane coverage on the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell.